speaking about one topic which I have been asked a thousand times to talk about that is since the time I bought a drone which is a month ago or so everyone have been asking me about one thing that is the legality of flying a drone in India the common questions have been is it legal to buy a drone is it legal to import a drone is it legal to fly it around Okay, so I'm going to keep this video very simple. I'm not going to be using any legal terms or anything very serious so that all of us can understand about buying and living and flying a drone in India. Living means living with a drone in India. That is what I mean. Okay, let us start. Number one, keep legality aside. I would not speak about legality now. I'll speak about moral responsibility, being morally correct. Because that is what I have always been interested in. It could be riding fast, it could be doing anything in life. I don't refer to the log book, I mean the law book. I first refer to myself, to my heart and my mind and my soul. What am I doing? Uh, if I'm doing something, is it morally correct? Am I being responsible towards the people around and towards myself? So flying a drone is a huge responsibility because do understand that although these things are extremely sophisticated, they are automated in many ways, but they can have malfunctions and they can also fail when they are flying. So if that happens and this thing comes crashing down, it can cause issues. So that is the reason, point number one, try and understand that we have to be responsible towards the society and other people and we should not be flying these drones in populated areas. Now you could say you have been flying it over your terrace. Yes, but this area is not very populated. You see quite a few buildings, but very few people actually keep walking around on the road. So, and most of the time when I've flown the drone, it has been on you know the outskirts of the city because that is the best place to fly. Because see, for example, when you're flying this drone, there are a few kind of issues. Number one, bird hits. Yes, this is serious. A bird hit can take down a jumbo jet. I mean, the engine can fail, correct? We all know that. And these are small flying machines. They are beautiful, they are amazing, but they're small flying machines. And the rot rotor, the propeller, doesn't really have so much power. So if there's a big bird, uh, for example, even a pigeon for that sake can hit the prop and knock it off the motor can go bad or the prop can go bad and if that happens well this thing it needs all the four rotors uh, to be working for it to be in a stable flight so if that happens this thing can come crashing down and when the other props are spinning at thousands of rpm and if these props hit someone else on the face or on the neck that can be lethal that can be deadly so that is our responsibility. We got to be very careful and understand where to fly these drones. And another thing, high tension electric cables. So because when you're flying a drone away from yourself, these things can go really far. This thing has a claimed range of five kilometers without interference of cell phone towers. So when you're flying it very far, you probably don't know, you know, if there are any uh, high tension electric wires. And if this hits that electric wire, uh, cable this thing can come crashing down so be very careful so you would not only damage your drone but also hurt someone on the ground so that is one thing and next it's about privacy now if you're flying a drone you can see everything on the ground correct so don't try to spy at people it is not only a criminal offense but it is ethically wrong so deliberately or unintentionally even if you go over a private property it could be someone's farm or a private area it is not a good thing you know forget about you getting sued by that person but you 
should be doing would doing that because would you like it if you are in your private you know property in your farm with your wife or your girlfriend near the pool and someone gets a drone and films you you wouldn't like that right so whenever you are about to do something put yourself in that shoe and think would I like it and if you don't like it don't do that to others now of course you know it goes without saying that you cannot fly a drone over a military establishment or a police establishment or any security kind of establishment they'll not just shoot the drone down but they'll get you and find you where you are so don't do that now about the legality of owning a drone can you own a drone yes absolutely you can own a drone uh, the DGCA, Directorate General of Civil Aviation, they have put a law where we cannot import drones legally. You need a license to import a drone. So until about a year ago or so, if you visit America or any other place and if you like a drone, you just buy it, put it into your check-in baggage and you can get it home. Probably just pay some custom import tax. But currently, if you buy it in America or anywhere and get it to India, at our airport, the customs department will not let you take this drone home. If you're lucky, if they don't see it in the scan baggage, you can still take it home. But legally, they have the right to take your drone and, you know, it, it's basically the imports are banned. The reason being that DGCA, Directorate General of Civil Aviation, has put drones under unmanned aerial vehicles. It's, it's, it sounds very serious. The drones are sophisticated, but they aren't really unmanned aerial, aerial vehicles. They are more of basic filming stuff, you know. So, I mean, they are technically, if you think, unmanned aerial vehicles, but not really like a huge, uh, you know, uh, drone like the American uh, Air Force has got, which can shoot someone down, right? So, keep apart privacy and keep apart, keep apart that this thing can crash and hurt someone on the ground. There isn't really... A big issue with these drones but that is how our Indian government is they don't like it they ban it they ban the imports but if you already own a drone there is no issue at all and that is how I got a drone I did not import it personally one of my friend owned it in India already he flew it for about three or four times and he was not using it so I put a proposal across that why don't you sell it to me I'm gonna film some beautiful uh, you know short clips for my subscribers friends so that is how i got this drone so this drone was legally imported some time ago and it was in india so i bought it from a friend so owning this drone is legal for me now if you own a drone and if you would like to know legally how can you fly it point number one if you wake up in the morning at your farm somewhere get up fly the drone without disturbing others without causing any privacy issues no one cares about it correct so that is the most safe way of flying it but just like the event the dirt track event that i had covered if you would like to do something like that which is more serious correct i was flying in front of a large audience and there were also police available there so how do you do that for that you need the permission of the local police it's a very basic permission you know but you need to approach them and let them know that this is a so-and-so event that is going to happen and you'll be flying a drone for the sole purpose of filming that event that is happening and I would suggest that you take along someone with you who is kind of influential in that area so you get that permissions easily because when I was flying at the dirt track event uh, all the permissions were granted they were taken by the CEO of Yash Motorsports so I was flying the drone and filming with cops giving me security that was pretty cool so that is about it friends uh, you know nothing much so even if you want a drone just be careful when you're flying taking off make sure that the surroundings don't have very you know serious high tension electric cables or it doesn't have too much of bird population and make sure your batteries are charged <laughs> You know, you don't want to end up in a bad situation when the battery is too low and you won't be able to get back the drone to the, you know, takeoff or landing point. And also, spend time in learning to fly the drone. Although these things are very, very easy to fly, but you still need to spend time and uh, kind of get 
the knack of flying it so that is it i think if you have any specific questions let me know i can help you out and this drone many people ask me how did it cost me this phantom 3 professional 4k only only the drone would cost about 95000 or a lakh and i got it i mean i got the drone i got carbon fiber aftermarket parts with it i got a hard case which is an awesome case uh, which you would have seen in the intro of this video you can check in the drone into uh, an aircraft a commercial aircraft and even if they put something on it the case would still protect the drone so that case itself costs about 20000 rupees it is an original tough case of dji and i got two batteries and i got six extra propellers and i don't know what not so all this package put together will probably cost you about and i also have a, a special charger using that charger i can charge three batteries and one transmitter at the same time so if you put all of this together probably it will cost you about 1 lakh 40000 rupees but i got lucky i got it for about a lakh so you know i keep getting lucky in life that is it friends the video has already you know become pretty long now and any questions do shoot to me in the comments i understand i have been uh, a bad boy I haven't been replying to many comments of late because uh, it's really sorry friends you know time is and time is a huge essence uh, for me in my life and i only get about one and a half day in a week so it becomes really tough but i will try and reply and if you have any serious questions since you know you can also email send an email to me that would be at i am motorbiker at gmail.com that is i a m m o t o r b i k e r at gmail.com and i will reply cheers and happy flying